Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One of Us Adventures. Last week you would have seen that we started to fit our ceiling in our bus. We also wanted the front cab area of our bus to have a curb ceiling as well. So we're going to try and work on that today. So it's really great to hear from all of you guys. Um, we've got lots of amazing loyal subscribers and thanks to all the new ones we've had over the last week too. It's really nice to have you along. So hope you enjoy guys. Leave your comments down below. With our uh, cab area, we do still have the original headliner, but it's in a little bit worse for wear and to get the carpet off is going to be difficult. It also weighs quite a lot. Um, so it's primarily made of like fiberglass, I think, but then it's been like padded out with sound deadening and wood and all sorts of stuff that's bonded to it on the, on the back. So we could reuse this, but I don't think it's going to quite give us the storage solution that we wanted at the front. So we're going to try and make our own version of this using bendy plywood. Um, and that should also allow us to add 50 mil of insulation in the cab area. If we'd used this, I don't think we would have got that in. Um, we would probably have to have gone with just wool or the 25 mil stuff. So. Could have reused this, probably would have been maybe easier, but we want to try and go with something a little bit more bespoke. Please just ignore the fact that I'm using my mini as a storage bench. We will sort that very soon. All this plywood here is left over from when we lined the ceiling. I think we're going to be able to use the larger piece and some of these offcuts to be able to line it. Now, this only bends in one direction, so it's all long grain bendy plywood so you have to think carefully about how you put it around the curves and radiuses of the roof if you bend it the wrong way it basically snaps in half ribs here that go along they're about 25 mil deep so we could just use 25 mil insulation in here but what i'm actually going to do is cut some of this 25 mil batten to put over the top of it to make this 50 and then I'm going to bond a strip down here and on the other side so we've got wood to fix our lightweight ply into um, and then in between we can use 50 mil insulation board. When we come around the front here, um, so we're going to ply down and around and then what I'm actually going to do here is take the carpet from this area in and around tight. We're going to have a shelf here in front of it, um, which will be open. So we'll have a shelf here that will be open, a couple of speakers underneath and the radio underneath, just so we've got some extra storage. Uh, for this first part, we're literally just going to concentrate on lining the roof and getting the supports in place ready for the shelf. There's already some holes in these supports which just so happen to fit an M8 rib nut perfectly. So I'm going to use M8 rib nuts in this hole, maybe not that one, and the same up here. So if I butt it up against this edge that'll be absolutely fine. And then we'll bond that wood on there too, just so it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm using 50 mil stuff, foam board insulation. Anywhere where I can't get that stuff in, I'm gonna fill all of the crevices and things with the wall insulation that we used around the curved part of the rest of the ceiling. The fact that this is long grain bendy ply means I've, it only bends the one way, as I mentioned earlier. So I need to figure out how I can cut the piece so it bends, so I can use it bending down the length of the vehicle and also curve around the edges out of the same piece. The decision to put these in I think was a good one. So we've got these that are attached with rib nuts, these wooden beams that I've already taped over. These ones here, they're just um, 
for belt and braces really. And what I've done is I have bonded three pieces of two by one together and to the roof um, with some heavy duty weather resistant mastic. And that is strong. Just to, this is all this is gonna be doing is supporting some five millimeter uh, plywood but I didn't want it to bow. So I've put this on here that will take it down. So the next job tomorrow will be to cut this middle piece. How I'm doing that, I think, is I'm going to cut it along this line, symmetrical along the other way, and it's gonna bend down the front here. I'm gonna put a batten across here using these factory holes. Um, I'm gonna take those out and put riv nuts in there. Factory holes along there, Secure this piece along with the baton, so that will cover up to here, basically. And then what I'm going to do over here is use a smaller piece and follow the curve round like the rest of the bus, like going backwards. And what that will leave us here is basically a curved edge here where it will be open this end by about, what is it, about four or five inches. Um, and we'll have a gap here. We are going to have that, um, that I'm going to have to fill in. And then when we come along and put the shelf along here, because we're on about a 30 centimetre deep storage area here, and more over the driver's side, we'll put a lip around the front to make it all look nice, to basically finish that edge off so you won't see it. That's the idea. So, catch you tomorrow morning. Next, we have to put a pattern from here to here, and then one for the top from here to here. We're going to use these existing holes. We've abandoned Daddy and Grandad at the bus, haven't we? And we've come for an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to go to the bus. So, we decided to go inside and scoop in the cow. We're going over here. Yeah. Get your finger by me in hot. Wow! <laughs> That's amazing! Yeah. I'm stuck carrying the scooter now, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Hello guys. Welcome to Lily and Mummy Inventions. Are we? Oh, yeah, we yeah. And we're going to have grasshoppers, butterflies, and dogs. And we saw dragonflies, yeah. didn't we? What colour are they? Red. It might be a damselfly, I'm not sure of the difference. Look, some food and water for the cats. There's the load of poo, and it's down in that. I haven't seen any cats yet. No. Go on then, scoop, scoop. The mail. You got it. You put the baby on and said the mail. So I don't want anyone to hear books. Nelly thinks that she's going to open these fairy doors. I hope I can. Are you guys? Yeah, let's see. Oh, I think that only fairies can open them. Right. You can turn. <gasps> I don't think you can open it though, because that's where the fairies live and only the fairies can open them with their fairy magic. But why is it turning and the only fairies can open it? Well, you can't open it and see in the tree, can you? I can't open the other one. <gasps> Come on then, back on your scooter. And um, we're going to use the same sheep's wool, well, thermo fleece. Um, insulation up in behind the board where we've got a void. I'm going to shove some of that up in there now. Rich is just pushing some sheep in there. It's great stuff. Natural, but it stinks. Yes. But we discovered that after we put this stuff in for the roof. It goes. It does go, yeah. The lady from, um, what was the place called that I bought it from? I'll put it down below. But I spoke to her over Facebook and she said that she has a, a 
duvet filled with this stuff and she said yeah after a while the smell just goes so. <laughs> it's all good it smells like sheepy poop hello hello here's my dad back for another adventure picking his nose look i'm picking his nose i moved <laughs> ruining my fun i'm just measuring up so this is the piece of plywood that we used on the roof we didn't get it quite right so we're trying to, to use it now um and we're going to cut it into a t-shape so we need to cut it to meet the middle and then what we're going to try and do out of the other offcuts if we can is to make each side of the roof also curve your dad wants to just do one side of it flat which makes total sense but then i'm like it doesn't hit the eye right so what Basically, long story short, is we might cut all of this stuff up. It might not work. It might not work, but we haven't got a lot to lose apart from time, which I've already apologised to him for. <laughs> having fun, Dad? Dad, Dad, you having time of your life? <laughs> we both so much thinking about this. So I spent hours yesterday, and we're still both confused about yeah. the best way to do it. It's a lot of like measuring and then also guesstimating. Basically, what we'll do, it'll come along this line and then it'll be wider at the front. So, this bit will flap down at the front the whole way, and then we're hoping that we can curve up to this point. So, there will be a hole here, we think, maybe, we think. But then we'll have the storage which comes up along that covers it. Yeah. So far, we're in four sheets of plywood, and this is the fifth. Bendy plywood. Bendy plywood. 5.5 millimetre bendy plywood. Long grain we're using here. That's all my steering wheel, babe. Yeah, Dad. I sprayed that and then hand lovely hand stitched it on. You shouldn't have put it there in the way. <laughs> and oblivious he is. <laughs> the scrap plywood, well, you know, the practice plywood from last week was then cut up into that T shape and then screwed into place in the vehicle. The first piece is in, the T piece, where with all the cables through it, the cable for the lights, uh, cables for our radio, reversing camera, over cab lights, the little fan, all of that stuff, which leaves us with these bits down the side so that we're gonna try and mimic the curve all the way down. So what we're gonna do to do that, I'm going to just riv nut up in these existing holes with M8 riv nuts. And then I'm gonna put a piece of uh, two by one, plain two by one, all the way along that to be able to screw the curved wood into. Because it tapers down, we're gonna do it in little bits and then tape the edges over um, and then carpet over the thing. So that's what we're gonna do next. But the last thing I'm going to do today really is just pop in these riv nuts and then in a minute's time you'll see us next weekend just to be extra confusing carrying on this little job. I've shown this before but you know you might be new here. So these are called riv nuts um, and I'm going to use the existing holes in the body of the vehicle so I don't have to drill new ones. Um, it does mean that will have a nice secure fixing point as well. So first thing you do, pop the rib nut onto your tool, onto the mandrel with it open, it's important. And then what you do, I'll just try and do it, it's kind of squiffy, but it's uh, in the hole, the hole should be nice and snug. And then keeping the pressure on, up you go. Now that is tight in there now. I always like to do another turn or so and tighten it back up and then retract and repeat. Fast forward into the next weekend, it's Friday actually, so the roof nuts are in, the next job is to cut a button to run from here to here and then the same actually from there to there across and then I'm going to notch that out to go around to the cable 
and then we've got the basis to create the curve. Along here, we're going to make this from various offcuts that we've got, so they're uniform. I've seen this done in Airstream caravans on the back edge of the wall, and then it looks to me like they will overlap them, and then that'll obviously give you ridges. So what we're going to do is actually run them butted up against each other and then brace in behind with some wood just so the curve um, remains as flat as possible. And then at this front bit here, because it's in the cab area, we think we're gonna carpet over it anyway. So you won't see those joints, but obviously we don't want them to be undulating. So we're gonna try and keep those as flat as we can with bracing. And we also got some fiber, fiber tape to go over it to keep it together. First, let's cut those buttons. Each of these corner front pieces um, is going in at an angle. So what we're having to do is butt it up against the roof and basically take off a diagonal from one corner down to nothing on the other end. And that way when we put it in, it will match the existing piece of wood that we've got in the middle, the T-shaped piece, and they curve round. And we've measured the the radius of it to match the other corner too. So I'm just going to chop that off now. These end pieces here, we need to cut to shape. So we're just going to use some cardboard to make a template, cardboard assisted design CAD. And so we can then pop that over our plywood. Make sure it's right. Just showing Dave the washer trick with the scribe, see if it's worked. So we've finished the curvy bits. I'm just going to glue on some end pieces. We've also started the overhead storage in earnest, but it requires a little bit more thinking, which we'll go over. I've got some pieces cut here to stick on the um, front edges of the van. Up in here on the front edge, I'm going to stick these on. So this edge here is no longer going to be open. And then this part here is done. And so next up really, I'm going to be boxing in this again. Now it'll all be ready to be finished off. This bit here is another ongoing project, which we'll show you. Basically, we're gonna have some nice storage here with a couple of doors on the front for storing some bits and bobs, as well as our radio and this and the other. Got quite a few offcuts hanging about, so I'm just gonna stick on the back edge of this curved piece. So I've got a mounting point for those little trim pieces that we're gonna put on the end. So, Plop that on there, give that 15 minutes to set, and then I'll plop the other one on. And I'll put a screw in for good measure. And this is how we're leaving this week's video. So we've got the wall curve up now on the front. Next up, we're gonna be installing some nice storage, um, some clever solutions for our radio and all of that good stuff. So any tips and comments on that, we really welcome. We hope you've enjoyed mine and Lily's adventures as well and we'll see you soon one two three bye, bye. <laughs>